What if I told you that Noah's Ark has already been found? In today's video, I'll be revealing to you the shocking mystery behind Noah's Ark and its true location. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss the newest evidence that I reveal at the end of this video. Let's get right into it. To understand what's going on here, we need to go back in time just a little bit. The tale of Noah and the Flood is likely one of the most famous stories in the Bible, though it's often misunderstood and surrounded by controversy. People debate whether it's a true global event, a local happening, or just a myth. You can find the story in Genesis chapters 6 through 9. It starts with a strange mention of the sons of God and the daughters of men having illicit relations possibly leading to the birth of the Nephilim. Then God, seeing the wickedness of humanity, decides to wipe out everything. He tells Noah to build a big boat and gather pairs of every animal because a huge flood is coming to destroy all life on land. And what did Noah do? He did exactly what God guided him to. Noah builds the ark and fills it with animals, just as God instructed. As soon as they're aboard, the rain starts pouring and the springs burst forth. It rains for 40 days, and the flood lasts over a year. Eventually, the water recedes enough for everyone to leave the ark. Noah offers a sacrifice, and God promises to never flood the earth again. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, it's written that, The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. This might lead some to think that God was surprised by how sinful humanity had become, and reacted with anger by deciding to start over. But when we consider God's omniscience, knowing the future and his eternal plan, this interpretation doesn't quite align. Before the world began, God had already chosen Christ as our Redeemer and had chosen believers in him. The word regretted in Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 could also be understood as was grieved. This suggests a deep emotional response from the Creator towards his creation's state. Despite knowing the outcome, it still deeply saddened him. This shows that God isn't distant or detached from his creation, rather he's intimately involved. We see him finding joy in his creation and disappointment in how we've treated it. But this is where things get shocking. The main reason God decided to flood the world was because people had become incredibly wicked, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 to 7 and repeated in Genesis chapter 6 verses 11 to 13. It says that everyone's thoughts were constantly evil, which might be exaggerated, but it shows a serious rebellion against God. Even though our world isn't perfect today, it's not as bad as it was back then. It seemed like humanity was on the brink of destroying itself, so God stepped in to stop the evil. He told Noah to build an ark to save some animals and people from the flood. But Let's take a pause for a moment so we can jump back to the present day. Now that we know the whole story of the Ark, we can truly appreciate what's about to be revealed, so you might want to pay close attention to this next part now. While numerous locations have been suggested as the possible resting place of Noah's Ark, none have come as close to matching the Durapinner site. In 1958, topographical engineer Captain Ilan Durapinner was working on mapping Eastern Anatolia at the General Directorate of Mapping in Ankara. On Friday, September 11th of that year, while going through thousands of mapping films, he noticed a very interesting ship-like formation. Intrigued, he examined it closely, especially because the region was Agri Dogubezit or Mount Ararat. Upon closer inspection, he realized that the measurements given in the holy books of Noah's Ark matched the location. It was situated at the foot of the Tenderek mountain between Dogubeazet, Uzengili village, and Teselka villages, 17 kilometers south of Agri mountain. Did this mean that Ilhan Durapinar finally discovered Noah's Ark, a search that had spanned centuries? Well, this is where things get really interesting. The news of the discovery quickly spread within the institution, prompting journalists to visit the General Directorate of Mapping the following day to interview Ilhan Durapinar. When asked if he had found Noah's Ark, Durapina responded cautiously, stating that it was too early to make such a claim without conducting on-site investigations, geophysical studies and detailed archaeological work in the area. The first report about the discovery emerged exactly one week after the event on September 18, 1959, making headlines on the front page of the Milliot newspaper with the title, A Boat Resembling Noah's Ark 
has been cited. Subsequently, the second report was published in the 43rd issue of Hyatt magazine on October 23, 1956, titled Photograph to Engage the World, featuring the map photograph of Noah's Ark and images of Captain Ilan Durupina, authorized by Turkish armed forces. Born in Amasra in 1925, 34-year-old survey engineer Captain Ilan Durupina gained recognition both in Turkey and worldwide due to this news. The third report about the discovery appeared again in Hayat magazine, 10 months after the initial discovery. In its 30th issue dated July 22, 1960, the magazine dedicated two full pages to the topic, posing the question, is this Noah's Ark? Following the latest news, Ilhan Durupina began receiving letters from various countries worldwide. But what happens next is straight out of a Hollywood movie. One of the most significant letters arrived in September 1960 from Walt Disney, expressing interest in investigating a substantial budget to build hotels, roads, and airports in Dogubayazet. This envisioned turning the region into a major tourist destination centered around a proposed Noah's Ark theme park. They sought Europeano's assistance in meeting with government officials to facilitate the project. However, Walt Disney's plans were thwarted by a military coup that occurred the same year. Shortly after the news was published by Hayat magazine, it gained further attention when Life magazine featured it on September 5, 1960. In an interview with Life magazine, Professor Brandenberger expressed his belief that the object seen in the photograph was too symmetrical to be a natural formation, confidently stating that it resembled a ship. This statement had a significant impact in America and around the world. During this time, one of Turkey's prominent archaeologists, Professor Ekrem Akurgal, emphasized the need to protect the ancient ship discovered by Durapinar. However, the unfortunate timing of these developments coincided with a military coup on May 27, 1960, which diverted public attention away from the discovery and its potential significance. But that was not the end of the story, and here's where things take a turn. Initially, academics dismissed the possibility of the Ark's existence, calling it a natural formation. However, recent excavations have uncovered evidence of human activity, such as seafood remnants and clay objects dating back to 5500 BC, around the time when the flood is believed to have occurred. This discovery represents the most promising evidence thus far. Several other locations have been proposed as potential sites of the Ark, including areas in Galilee, the Taurus Mountains, and the Caucasus Mountains. However, there are skeptics who completely reject the idea that the Ark ever existed. One of the most frequently pondered questions about the Ark is, what is its actual appearance? Describing the appearance of Noah's Ark as outlined in the Bible, God instructed Noah to build a vessel measuring 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in breadth, and 30 cubits in height which roughly translates to 134 meters long, 22 meters wide, and 13 meters high. Additionally, God specified the use of resinous wood and pitch for construction. Given the task of accommodating pairs of animals, it's likely that multiple levels were needed to house them. According to Jewish texts, the Ark might have had three levels symbolizing heaven, earth, and hell. Similar flood myths exist in various cultures and religions. Historians often connect these stories to Mesopotamian flood myths, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, which shares similarities with the biblical storyline but differs in some details. In this tale, the Ark is described as a cube with six decks. In Islam, the Ark is described as an ordinary-sized ship, while in the Baha'i faith, the story is considered symbolic rather than literal. These variations reflect the diverse interpretations and adaptations of the story across different cultures and religious traditions. The biblical account states that the deluge lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. After 150 days, the waters fully receded and the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Mount Ararat, a volcano situated on the border of Turkey and Armenia, is traditionally associated with this event. However, there is some debate and confusion regarding whether Ararat refers to the physical mountain or if it might be a mistranslation for another location. Some scholars propose that Ararat could actually be Hebrew for the Iron Age Kingdom of Urartu, which was located in Armenia. Now, following the flood, Noah offered burnt offerings to God, who promised not to flood the earth again. Noah and his sons then began to repopulate the earth as instructed. However, the fate of the Ark itself is not mentioned in the Old Testament. 
The fate of Noah's Ark after the waters receded remains a mystery and has sparked considerable interest over the years. Various theories abound, including the possibility that the Ark disintegrated, was dismantled for timber, or underwent petrification. The quest to find the Ark has affectionately been dubbed Archaeology. Historical accounts from antiquity, including those from Flavius Josephus, Epiphanius of Salamis, and John Chrysostom, suggest that the Ark was located in Armenia near Mount Ararat, referred to as the country of the Kurds. Throughout history, numerous claims have been made regarding possession of pieces of the Ark. For instance, Assyrian king Sennacherib claimed to have a beam from the original Ark, which he fashioned into a wooden idol statue. Conversely, some religious figures have asserted that the Ark disintegrated over time. In the 1800s, European explorers climbed Mount Ararat and reported sightings of the Ark. German explorer Frederick Parrott mentioned that locals avoided the mountaintop, fearing God's wrath for disturbing the Ark. Similarly, British politician James Bryce claimed to have seen remnants of the Ark's wood during his ascent on the mountain in 1876. However, subsequent claims of discovering the Ark have largely been dismissed as hoaxes or unsubstantiated rumours propagated by enthusiasts or swindlers. During the period from the 1970s to mid-1990s, interest in the peculiar site associated with the European Ark formation saw a significant surge. This surge was largely fueled by the exploration and research efforts of American adventurer and researcher Ron Wyatt, alongside a team of Turkish scientists. More recent investigations in 2014 and 2019, conducted by independent private geophysical survey teams, have added to the intrigue surrounding the European Ark formation. These studies, which utilized ground-penetrating radar, revealed subterranean layers and distinctive angular structures, characteristics not commonly found in natural geological formations. Of particular interest is the fact that the length of the European Ark formation perfectly matches the dimensions of the Ark as described in Genesis chapter 6 verse 15 of the Bible. But that's not all. In the autumn of 2021, a collaborative effort involving a Turkish scientific team and American media outlets including the History Channel embarked on the most comprehensive scientific investigation of the European Ark site to date. Utilizing a range of modern scientific methods, this project aims to further reveal the mystery surrounding the formation and determine the most effective means of preserving this intriguing yet important site for future generations to study and explore.